News at sunrise. Uncertainty surrounding an iconic Thanksgiving parade this morning. The famous Macy's balloons might be grounded over windy weather in Manhattan. Coming up this morning, a live report from New York as organizers face a last second call. If you have been to the grocery store and I have been plenty of times this week, you know it is packed. Drew may have the holiday off, but he went to the store to check out the crowds and talk with some shoppers about what they're thankful for. And of course, what they're eating today. Good morning to you. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm Nita Melhoff. Thank you for joining us this morning on your holiday. Hopefully your turkey is out. It is thawed. If not, uh, you might be up this morning joining us. Brenda and Drew have the morning off. Rod is still here with me. We are a team, man. Let's send it over to him in the Weather Center with a look at our forecast. We are the low on the totem pole <laughs> club. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, big story today is the active weather is gone. This is going to be a nice, quiet, but chilly, partly cloudy Thanksgiving day. I start with the temperatures this morning. The clouds really haven't cleared. They've broken in spots at times, and that's kept our temperatures mostly above freezing. 39 Vancouver, 37 Portland. There's a freezing number out in Happy Valley, 32. There are more uh, clear spots being reported down the Mid-Valley, and you can see that reflected in the temperature. Salem right now is at 28. So this goes on to be generally a partly cloudy day. Still a bit of a chilly east wind blowing at times, but nothing extreme. We'll get up to about 40 at lunchtime, hit 43 for a high, and they'll be clear in 39 at 5 o'clock. We are still watching incoming moisture Sunday morning that could have a wintry component to it. We'll talk more about that coming up. All right, Rod, thank you. Speaking of weather, the mountain got quite a bit of snow. There's over two feet of new on the ground. Timberline was supposed to open today, but now those winds have kind of put those plans on hold. So they will be making a decision by seven this morning on whether they can open some of those lifts. They don't want those chairs swinging around in the wind. Mount Hood Meadows does plan to open a couple of lifts tomorrow for a preview weekend. Based on how it goes, they will make a call on wind to open for the whole season. In Southern Oregon, if you have plans to head over the Siskiyou Summit into California, officials still advising caution for anyone driving that far south on I-5. They say there are still winter driving conditions, but things are at least looking much better near the Oregon-California border than a couple of nights ago. As many as 2,000 cars were stranded in NorCal and officials had to close I-5 near Ashland for nearly 24 hours. And we heard from one driver who was stuck in it. It's been a nice, comfortable night in the back seat, but I'm sure there's people that are way worse shaped than I am. California transportation officials say most of the cars that spun out and blocked traffic were not using chains. The FBI is investigating this morning after local rape survivor and activist Brenda Tracy got a threatening letter with a white powder inside and hazmat crews showed up to her home in Woodburn last night to check it out. Brenda Tracy has been an outspoken advocate for sex assault survivors after she shared her story of being raped by four men in 1998. Some of them were on the Oregon State football team. On Twitter, she posted about what happened last night with the letter she received, and she says it claimed to have anthrax and included a death threat. Her whole neighborhood was ordered to stay inside, and Woodburn Police and Fire went to investigate, but luckily found the powder was not real. Tracy posted this statement saying, I will not be silent. I will not stop my work. I will not cancel any of my bookings. I will not stop advocating for survivors. I am not going anywhere. A local nonprofit in Gresham is scrambling this holiday after someone stole thousands of dollars worth of Christmas trees for their fundraiser. Mike Benner reports. Well, the Christmas tree lot is set up in front of the Gresham Family Worship Center on West Powell. The Christmas trees locked up behind this fence. It appears the bad guys cut through this heavy duty lock and chain to get to what they were after. If it looks like this Christmas tree lot is lacking inventory, it's because it is. We're down to uh, about 100. Mike Odell is with Pacific Northwest Adult and Teen Challenge, a nonprofit that helps people suffering from addiction and other life controlling issues. To say they depend on their annual Christmas tree sales would be an understatement. All the money that we make from the Christmas trees goes straight back into our program. It helps us pay for gas for our vehicles, it helps keep the lights on. It makes what you're about to hear all the more troubling. 
Sometime between 8 o'clock Monday night and 11 o'clock Tuesday morning, somebody broke into the tree lot and stole more than 90 trees, as well as a table, chairs, a tent, and dozens of extension cords. In all, more than $5,000 worth of stuff. I was at a loss for words. I mean, <laughs> this is just devastating for our ministry. So, um, not sure what we're gonna do. Making matters even worse, the church where the tree lot is located had one of its vans and trailers taken. Grainy surveillance video obtained by KGW appears to show the thief driving away. Also, a box truck of some kind that may be carrying the stolen Christmas trees. There was a lot of anger at first, but I mean, there's nothing we can do about it now. As frustrated as Mike Odell is, he's even more compassionate, offering this message to the crooks. We just want you to know that uh, we forgive you, we love you. It would appear the key to cracking this case is finding the stolen van and flatbed trailer. The stolen van is a 2002 Ford Econoline E350, similar to the one you see here. The only difference being that it should say Gresham Family Worship Center along the side. Oregon license plate 643 DPM. If you spot the van or the trailer or know anything about this case, call the Gresham Police Department. Reporting in Gresham, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. This morning, we are also tracking allegations of sexual misconduct against Portland businessman and EU ambassador Gordon Sondland. Several local women say he made unwanted advances, then retaliated against them when they turned him down. Sondland strongly denying those allegations. Kyla Boshi has the latest. The nonprofit ProPublica and Portland Monthly Magazine reported today that three different women say Sondland made unwanted sexual contact before he was the U.S. ambassador to the European Union and at the center of the presidential impeachment inquiry. The women say the Portland businessman and hotel owner retaliated against them professionally after they rejected Sondland's advances. In the report, all three women provided lengthy on-the-record accounts of their interactions with Sondland and described his unwanted advances, including one incident where Sondland allegedly exposed himself. In a statement, Sondland said in part, these untrue claims of unwanted touching and kissing are concocted and I believe coordinated for political purposes. They have no basis in fact, and I categorically deny them. Reactions to the story came quickly. One of the women worked as a campaign manager for city commissioner Nick Fish. Commissioner Fish said he was outraged at Sondland's behavior and called for him to resign. Kyle Boshi, KGW News. Okay, back to happier Thanksgiving news. Yes. Look at this, our teammate Chris McGinnis. Congratulations to you. His family has grown. This is new baby Daphne. She was born yesterday afternoon. Chris and his wife and baby Daphne doing great. Look at that little face. We are so happy for them and big brother Patrick yeah. this morning. So uh, yeah, you guys are going to have your hands full. Maybe you're up right now, Chris. Hi. Maybe they never went to bed <laughs> last night. Maybe they never. Maybe went they to won't bed. go to bed until Chris comes back to work oh, weeks from now. Months and months and months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes. Terrific news. We have.